Hi guys, I'm just going to be completely cathartic here because um, the last video I did was the one with my husband and it actually got me quite upset and I saw this pattern that whenever he says something positive or remotely positive, <laughs> anything positive about the Mormon Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that we both grew up in and left over a year ago, um, I just, I just, I feel upset. All this anger comes up because I think of um, back when I was 18 and my entire family left Mormonism and I was actually the only one still going to church and I got into a deep, deep depression. And deep depression was... Um, not just due to my family leaving Mormonism, it was also due to my parents' divorce, but those two things went together. Like, um, because of my Mormon upbringing, I did not only lose my sense of family because it was falling apart, I also lost my eternal perspective because in Mormonism, I was taught that we could be together forever, and that was the ideal. And um, now, because my family had left church, um, the additional load that I was carrying was that not only did I see my family fall apart in this life, but also my eternal prospect was that I would get to go to heaven, uh, the celestial kingdom, and they weren't because they didn't persevere to the end by staying in Mormonism. And so I was really heartbroken that um, that I was I was gonna I was just gonna spend eternity alone. Like the Mormon teaching is like if you go to the celestial kingdom, the highest heaven, then you can visit others in, in lower heavens, but they cannot visit you. And so not only did I have to deal with my family falling apart and my family not having the same convictions anymore as I did, but also I had to deal with this idea of being an eternal orphan. That's how I felt. And also I had this, this load on my back that I was the only one uh, who would do proxy baptisms for my ancestors. So in Mormonism, it is your job to to save your ancestors and, and those around you and those that come after you. And the way you do that is by going into a Mormon temple and performing proxy baptisms. And the belief is that the deceased people have then, then have a choice whether they want to follow Jesus or not. They don't have a choice of upscaling un unless you do um, the proxy baptism for them. So I had, you know, as an 18-year-old girl, I had all this load of, of all my ancestors who were, who were just counting on me to, to save them. And then also um, I had this responsibility to persevere to the end for all those that would come after me, you know, my children and grandchildren. And then also this load of, you know, preaching the gospel to the whole world and, you know, basically converting everyone you know. <laughs> or you don't convert them, the Holy Spirit does, but you need to open your mouth, you know. So, um, but really just this teaching that, um, that our eternal prospect depends on whether we are Mormon or not is just so harmful and, and it got me so, so depressed. Just to think that I would just be in heaven alone without my family. And like, man, like I, I was having suicidal thoughts on a daily basis. And, you know, I, I was 18 then. I know, I'm sure you can tell I'm a little older now. So I dealt with that. But when my husband says things that I feel... Um, confirm people in their Mormon beliefs I get so angry I get so angry because because it's just it's not right that they did that to me that they did that to me I do feel 
like I was a victim of false doctrine and it makes me feel so torn, so torn because Jesus wants me to build bridges. <laughs> he asks for unity in his intercessory prayer. And and I really felt this calling on my life, like build bridges, build bridges, as if, you know, an all-knowing God would know that I would not know how to keep my mouth shut. So he wanted to <laughs> to kind of give me some guidance, you know. Um, so God told me to build bridges. And um, I always saw this image with that, like that you start from one side and you build towards the middle and also uh, simultaneously from the other side and you build towards the middle and then you make the bridge and so i feel um my critique of mormonism is this one side of the bridge it is how i can connect with others who also feel victimized by false doctrine or whatever they they see wrong with um, the church of jesus christ of Latter-day Saints, and at the same time, um, this is so, you know, this is, this is reality, that I had suicidal thoughts because of this church and what they are teaching. At the same time, the other side of the bridge is that I was having, I was not acting on my suicidal thoughts <laughs> because I truly did believe in a God and, uh, um, and also, I thought he was just a bully at that time. So, oh, that's this side of the bridge again. I thought God was just so mean. He just was stretching my soul because he just wanted me to grow, 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 grow. And it didn't matter how much I hurt. Um, the other side of the bridge is also the truth. And that is that the only thing that was positive in my life while I was hitting my rock bottom, while I was so low having suicidal thoughts on a daily basis was actually the mormon church um even though i didn't really have friends in the community i was at back then because all my peers had moved away to go to college elsewhere or um we just didn't click but still it was the only positive thing i had going for me um i um i just um you know, I, I felt my life was hell. And every once in a while I would still go to church every two or three weeks. And um, that was this side. That's this side of the bridge. Just people being nice and loving and really aspiring to something higher. Really wanting to be a better person and and gathering together around that goal. Um, was positive and it was good for me. And it was a light in my dark tunnel, even though a lot of that darkness was caused by the same church. And um, yeah, so I am constantly conflicted with this channel. Like, like if I emphasize the positive and I, I, I express my gratitude for what I've taken from Mormonism, I feel like I'm I'm not doing justice to like actually actually uh, pointing out to the harmful sides of it. And whenever I express my feelings about the harmful sides of it i feel i'm not doing justice to just those everyday mormons who are um good people and who just love jesus with all their hearts and you know and i'm i'm just stuck <laughs> i'm stuck because i i can't really find a good balance but um or i feel i'm always falling short and um Last week, this was really, really tearing me apart, and and I just felt so alone in it. And I, I prayed, I prayed, I asked, like God, I'm so sad. Please comfort me. Please comfort me. And um, and I opened my Bible, and it, I, I, I have like a million pieces of paper between my Bible uh, and plastic, <laughs> whatever I could find. <laughs> Uh, I put between pages to look things up another time again. And anyway, but my eye caught this tiny, tiny piece of paper that had broken off, but I could just see the edge of it. And so I was like, I feel I have to go for that one. And um, I opened my Bible and it opened on uh, John 16. Um, and it said, 
um, I'm just paraphrasing off the top of my mind from Dutch to English, so forgive me if it's not super accurate, but it said, I know you're sad now. And this is Jesus speaking to his disciples um, before he's going away. And he's he says to his disciples, I know you're sad now, but you will see me again and nothing, nothing can rob you of your joy. And I just, I felt such comfort from God. Like I asked for comfort and I got it. And um, I felt acknowledged in my sadness because that's how the sentence started. Like, I know you said. And then also it said, nothing can rob you of your joy. And I, I felt like, yes, I will see Jesus again, you know. And um, Mormonism does not have a hold on me. Like it cannot rob me from that certainty, that surety. Like I am 100% convinced that I will see the Lord and it will be a sweet, sweet embrace. But um, it also said nothing can rob you of your joy. And, and I also felt that it said like, if you are not joyful, like if this brings you down so much, it means you're giving your power away. Like no one can rob you of your joy. You can only let people rob it from you and um yeah that really it's it's true <laughs> it's true um we have a choice we have a choice whether we really let something get to us or not and, and eat our joy away and um that doesn't mean that we can be sad sometimes but um luckily we have something to look forward to we will see the Lord and it will be sweet and joyful and I don't know, I just wanted to share that with you and I hope you know that I, I am always trying to find this balance that I, I want anyone who's hurting to feel acknowledged but I also want to send love out into the world and it is so hard to find that balance. It really, really brings me to my knees and makes me realize that, um, yeah, just how much, how much I need God in my life. And uh, I'm grateful that he's always there like he was now. Um, and yeah, just read your Bibles, people. It's full of comfort and, um, Ask God to guide you in what you read if you really desperately need comfort. Because we all know there's also upsetting chapters in the Bible. So, um, But yeah, the Holy Spirit can guide you. Uh, just ask and you will receive. And that's my message for you today. Um, and oh yeah, my husband and I just recorded a sequel because I found the last video so upsetting. So I will um, edit that one. And as soon as I did, I will put it up online. So see you. Bye.